Hi, welcome back, Weld Team family. My name is David Sidisa, pipe fitter welder from El Paso, Texas. And today I'm going to be showing you guys some TIG repairs on pipe. Let's go. All right, guys, so I got this uh, six inch Schedule 40 pipe here set up in 5G. You know, through the full weld, I'm going to be putting indications in here and show you guys how to repair them. This is a valuable skill to learn in the field. You know, stuff happens beyond your control and, you know, you need to know how to fix it. I'm going to fire up right here on the bottom using 1 8 wire, 70S6. I'm running about 80 amps on the Miller XMT Pro. So here, guys, I'm just running my route like I normally would. You know, just warmed up the tack and then started adding filler metal. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start putting some cold wire in here. You know, this can happen. Somebody can bump the end of your wire. You know, you could be in a hooch and a uh, wind blows and uh, pushes your filler metal in there. So I'm just going to continue on up as if I didn't see that that happened, you know. I thought I got it. You know, I'm looking at our route here and I can see that piece of coal wire. It can really upset you sometimes out in the field. You're like, man, the rest of that route looked good. I got that one little spot. So what I usually do is I get a soapstone. You know, I kind of guess where the other area is at right here, kind of eyeballing. You know, I mean, I'm going to put a mark right here. This will help me identify when I go to grind it. And the way I'm going to repair this here is I'm going to grind it thin, like very, very thin. And then I'm going to go back over it with uh, some 332nd wire running slightly hotter than what I'm running right now. Got that all ground down nice and thin. I'm gonna go ahead and turn up our machine. 100 amps. I'm gonna go ahead and get a 332nd wire here. 70S6 as well. All right, so gonna fire up about a half inch away from where I, uh, I ground down just to start warming it up. You know, just start getting it hot, moving forward. Just keep pushing wire up there. Hold it there a little bit. Move forward. Hold it there a little bit. I'll go ahead. All right, so we got that coal wire taken care of on that other bottom quarter. I'm gonna go ahead and run this other bottom quarter. And on this one, I'm gonna do a bad tie in here on our tack. Keep going about a couple inches away from tying into our tack. Right, so coming up on it, gonna purposely, you know, miss this tie in. You can really see we really missed that tie in. You know, that looks really bad, unacceptable, that wouldn't pass. We're gonna go in there, we're gonna grind it out. We're gonna use this uh, little blade tool I made here. It's got a nice little hook on it. That's gonna help us kind of deburr the inside, clean it up, we'll grind it up, prep it back up, and try to get a good tie-in. One thing I wanna point out, guys, if you see the way I'm grinding, I kind of have my disc. At first, I was grinding down deep, straight, and then as I started to get down inside, start turning my disc a little bit this will kind of create your bevel back again so you're going to kind of turn it both ways kind of make your bevel back again from the outside i mean it's not going to be perfect but it will be workable so 
so we got it opened up. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this little tool in here. You kind of stick it in that direction there. You kind of use it to kind of grab the burrs from the inside, pull them up to the surface here. You can see it's kind of a small window here, but. Now, sometimes this takes a little bit of patience, guys, but you clean it up good, you'll end up with a good result here. All right, gonna go ahead and turn this tool around, see if I can catch some of this upper one. All right, so sometimes you, not, you might not be able to get the tool fully in there or get all the burrs that you can kind of see. So what I'm gonna do next is with no filler metal, I'm just gonna basically use this TIG torch and run it down the edges quickly to try to burn off some of those burrs. And we'll go back with a grinder, clean it up again, and then we'll repair it. All right, so I'm basically gonna use my grinder and do this kind of motion. You know, kind of clean up that rounded edge with, that we got with the TIG torch. Just kind of clean up those, that little weld bead we got there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go back here at our weld repair. I'm at 85 amps. Get into position here. Now I'm gonna start about a half inch back from our end. Get everything nice and hot. Uh, we get good fusion this time. Now just our same usual root technique, just burning our bevel edges. You know, now they're not perfectly straight, but you just gotta do the best you can. Try to keep your bead about as even as you can, as even as your bevel edges are gonna let you. Make sure you're burning your walls. You got a good consistent feed right here. Really kind of stay here a little bit. When we got to the end of our tack, make sure it fuses in good. Just kind of move up slowly and then go ahead and pop on out. All right, so we got that bad tie-in over here fixed. We're gonna go ahead and run this upper quarter. And on this quarter, guys, I'm going to put basically excessive penetration in there. I'm going to put too much metal in there, and we're going to go about pulling that metal back out. All right, so right here, I'm going to start to put too much wire. It'll make kind of a big old glob up top. All right. And then now I'm just going to continue to move on forward. Go all the way to our tack and tie in. All right, so you know, we got an excessive root in there. I'm gonna go ahead, and mark up the area where it's at here. So I know where to grind. After that, I'm gonna go ahead, thin it out. And what I'm gonna try to do here is, I'll have a 332 with me in my hand, just in case it tries to tear open because it's too thin. But I'm basically gonna use the TIG torch here and heat it up really hot and then actually walk backwards and then come back walk backwards again what that's going to do is it's going to suck that metal up from the inside and kind of pull it up to the surface for me I'm going to come back up again. Right 
Okay, so we're gonna go back up guys. Do this again. As you can kind of tell it's when I am pulling metal up to the top. All right, so we did pull that excessive penetration in there out. You know, it is, you know, just a little bit on the flat side. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is grind it back again, kind of put a little bit of metal back in there, just so the root looks a little more uniform. You know, that's still okay. It still passes, the bevel edges are burnt. You know, we're just basically doing this so it looks aesthetically better. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and close up this root, put our hot pass and start putting our fills. On the last fill here, we're gonna put a couple of indications to repair. All right, so we're on our last fill here and I'm gonna go ahead and put a, a large tungsten inclusion right in this area here. We're gonna have to dig that out. All right guys, so I'm gonna give a big tungsten inclusion here, just get my tungsten stuck in the puddle. Oh man, had to break that off. Now we got the wire stuck. Now we got a piece of tungsten inside, so I have to rip this wire off. All right, gonna go ahead and grind this out. I'm gonna make sure I get that tungsten out of there. You know, if you don't get that tungsten out of there, tungsten's more dense and you know, it'll show up extremely bright on x-ray. You know, it's denser than most metals, so it's gonna be very noticeable on x-ray. We'll go ahead and just uh, finish filling it all the way up here. All right, so I got that side all filled up. We cleaned out that tungsten inclusion over there. I'm gonna start coming from the bottom up. And on this side, we're gonna simulate somebody basically stepping on our argon hose or turning off the bottle, you know, mistakenly thinking it was theirs. You know, this kind of stuff happens a lot on the field, shutdown, stuff like that. So, you know, it's gonna create a ton of porosity. It's gonna make a mess. It's gonna mess this tungsten up, but We'll go ahead and show you how to get that all out once it happens. All right, go ahead and shut off the gas. All right, as you can see, we got a lot of porosity right there. We're gonna have to dig pretty deep, make sure we get it all out, and then have to kind of rebuild that fill. So I'm gonna go ahead and start digging it out. If you guys wanna see over that bubble, you can see how far that porosity actually went down in there. It's very deep. Go ahead and keep digging it out. All right, so ground it out. I think I got everything out, but to double check, I'm gonna hit it with this wire wheel. You know, if there's any kind of metal that I smeared over that grinding disc, it should pop out here with this wire wheel. All right, so this one area here, it's very deep guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill that small area up first, grind my stop and then come back and do the second fill right over that. Now it went so deep, it almost got all the way down probably around our hot pass, so go ahead and fill that up. We'll go ahead and uh, flush it out here. All right, we're gonna get ready to cap this here. And coming up around here, I am gonna miss the, the bevel edges, you know, not completely cover our bevel here. You know, that stuff kind of happens when it's just that right time of the day, sun gets in the back of your hood, you can't see where you're going, you know, or you got obstructions, you can't see well, you know, you miss the sides. 
and uh, show you guys how to fix that up. All right, so coming up here, I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of veer off my bevels here. You know, kind of like if the sun's in the back of our hood, we can't see. Maybe the pipe was a little too high and you know, our own cup kind of blocks our view. You know, this kind of stuff does happen out in the field. As you can see here, guys, on this side, you know, we didn't burn our bevel edge here. You know, it's still, still showing here. You now that's visually not acceptable. What we're gonna do here is I'm actually gonna grind this down, this whole section here. Get a tiger disc, kind of blend this side here. You grind it smooth. I don't want to remove too much metal from this side. I don't want to dig down deeper than what my pipe is. And then we'll go ahead and recap here. Then I'm going to go ahead and put our flap disc on here. And on the side here where I veered off, you know, it's not in line with the rest of this cap. I'm going to kind of lightly hit it with this tiger disc just to erase kind of that marking where we went off. You know, a lot of guys will just, you know, run that TIG rig over, just kind of wash it over and kind of comb it over and make it look better. You know, to me, that's really noticeable. Like, I'll know when somebody did that, so I don't like the way that looks. So go ahead and grind it and fix it up. All right, guys, I got my cutting disc here. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm actually going to put it here, run me a line right on the edge of my bevel here. That way I have a guide. You know, I'm kind of simulating if I can't see the sun's hitting the back of my hood. I'm going to give myself every chance, every best opportunity to be able to see my sides and leave a good cap here. Let go ahead and mark this up here. As you can see, now I've got a good clear pathway of where my cap should be. I have something really easy to follow through my welding lens. Go ahead and weld this back up here. Still at 170 amps. That's what I ran the rest of this cap at. And when I start walking, I'm not going to just start adding filler metal right away. You know, it's going to leave a nice, it'll leave a bump right here. So I'm going to go ahead, warm it up, and slowly introduce wire so that way it transitions smoothly. You now with the, with the cutting marks that I did with the Metabo there, you can really see the sides. I can really see my edges, shouldn't have any issues with my cap being straight this time. And those little cut marks I did, if you don't have a cutting disc, you know, you can kind of do that with a 1 8 grinding disc as well. Alright, so we got this side all fixed up here. It's nice and straight again. You know, you do see the stop, start there. But, you know, it still looks presentable. It's still uh, straight. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, cap up the other side. All right, so there you have it. Showed you guys how to do all kinds of repairs here with TIG on this pipe from root to cap. And at the end of the day, we've got a pretty clean, pretty nice looking weld after all the indications and all the issues we had with it. You know, it's a clean, passable weld. Should be acceptable. You know, this kind of stuff happens all the time in the field. You'll run into all kinds of issues. Sometimes it's, it's even like this, all on one weld. And you guys gotta know how to fix it if you're gonna be out there. If you guys like any of the gear you saw me using, this medium cup pipe liner, flip adapter, and the new Clearview HD lens, visit welllife.com. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys in the next one.